Welcome to the session on Operations Management Module 2. In lesson number 5, we will be discussing about forecasting errors and measures. In the previous lesson, we have discussed exponential smoothing method and we also covered all the other quantitative and qualitative types of forecasting methods. In this particular session we will see how methods can be evaluated if we have two methods of evaluation or say the same method with different constant values for example in exponential smoothing method we discussed about three cases same data same initial assumption and three alpha values of 0 0.1 0 0.2 and 0 0.4 if such cases exist and how to determine which is the best possible method or which is the best possible value of alpha in terms of accuracy. So here the measure that we are going to use is which method yields or gives me the least error that is which gives me the least difference between the actual demand and the forecast. If I can evaluate that and if I can find out which method gives me the least possible error then I can conclude that that particular method is the best method under the given considerations. So let us see now what are the different errors that exist in forecasting and what are the different measures of evaluating a method of forecasting. Measuring forecasting accuracy. So first we introduce a term called as MFE which means mean forecast error. So this particular measure determines how accurate the given forecast is for a given time period. It is calculated as the actual demand minus the forecast or in other words the error for time period T is equal to the difference between the actual demand and the forecast for that particular time frame. So ET is the error for T time period T which is equal to the difference between AT that is the actual demand for time T minus the forecast for time T. The forecast error in one time period does not convey much information. So we need to look at the accumulation of errors over a period of time. So if we have data over a period of time based on the data available we can find out the errors that is if I have all the values of actual and all the forecast values and the difference between this will give me the error for that particular time frame that particular time period based on which I can find the mean forecast error and judge on give a judgment on which is the best method or which is a better method. Now we can calculate the average value of these forecast errors over a period of time which we call as a mean forecast error or MFE. So the accumulation of these errors over a period of time is not always very indicative or does not always indicate to you the right uh, the exact errors because some of them will be positive and some will be negative. So if you are interested in whether it is positive or negative then this particular value this accumulation of values is not very indicative or is not foolproof they whatever measure you get at the end of the evaluation may not give you the most accurate results. We will see solve an example and see what is the disadvantage of this particular process but usually this process or this particular measure takes into account positive as well as negative errors. Let us see. These positive and negative errors cancel one another. that is a problem. So this particular measure the problem with this particular measure is the positive and negative errors cancel each other and so when I look at the clearer I will not get a clear picture from this particular forecasting measure because the positive and negative errors gets cancelled and in the end if uh, for a period of time I get a value 
of say zero, which means the process is perfect. But that is that may not be the case. That zero you might have obtained because of positive and negative errors cancelling each other. So this is just a initial raw type of forecast error measure. There are some improved versions of this uh, accuracy measuring measures which we will discuss one by one. So the type of errors that we are considering. Now this is the actual demand. You can see here the first column shows the number of years. There are six years. These are the actual demands that is 80 for the given six years. Hypothetical forecast weighed with method one. Let us say we have two methods here. We are evaluating two methods, method one and method two, which is more accurate. So this third column here represents the forecast values made with method one, that is FT. You can see here 310 is the actual demand, 315 is the forecast for a particular time, year one, using method one. Similarly, 365 is the actual demand for year two, 375 is the forecast for year 2 using method 1 and so on. So let us first concentrate only up to here. Let us see just we will just see till this particular point. You can see here actual demand is 310. The forecast value for year 1 is 350 using method 1. So the difference between or the forecast error as we have defined is the difference between the actual and the forecast. So 310 minus 315. 310 minus 315 gives you this particular value minus 5. So minus 5 is the error. So you are considering you are not neglecting this minus sign here. You are taking into account this minus sign also. So here for the second year 365 minus 375 will be equal to minus 10. So the error for year 2 is minus 10. For year 3 the error will be 395 minus 390 which will be equal to plus 5 this is plus 5 this is plus 5 that is your actual demand has been 5 units more as is 5 units more than the forecast correct so you achieved more than the forecast that is why plus 5 similarly you find out for the 6 4th 5th and 6th years and these are the total forecasting errors actual minus forecast for every year you are finding out the difference between the actuals and the forecast so this is your total errors, forecast errors with method 1, 80 minus FT. 80 minus FT, 1 by 1, when you calculate, see this fifth one, 450 minus 435 is 15, that is plus 10, uh, plus 15, rather, 450 minus 435 is plus 15, 465 minus 480 is minus 15, 415 minus 405 is plus 10 and so on. You see here the difference. The difference between the values. So this is basically the difference between column 2 and column 3. Column 2 minus column 3 will give you this particular values. So when you add all this, cumulative of all this, minus 5, minus 10, plus 5, plus 10, plus 15, minus 15 you get a value of 0. So your accumulated forecast errors over a period of time is 0 for method 1. So this is the disadvantage we were discussing. See, there are, see, plus minus 10 is a huge difference. Minus 5 is also a huge difference. But when you overall find out the accumulated forecast error, it turns out to be 0. Just because there is a positive here, positive and negative, they cancel out each other. So you get an accumulated forecast error of 0 units. So the mean forecast error MFE by definition is the total accumulated forecast error taking into account the minus and plus signs that is 0 divided by number of observations. Number of observations is 6. So when you add all this you get 0. This 0 divided by 6 is equal to 0. So the MFE here for forecasting method 1 is 0. So similarly if I now go to method number 2. For the same actual demand is the same, but the forecast forecast value that you have got by method two is different here. So this will be 310 
310 minus 370 that is minus 60 365 minus 455 that is minus 90 395 minus 305 that is 90 415 minus 535 minus 120 450 minus 390 that is 60 465 minus 345 is 120 so totally when I add up all this I again get 0 because again you can see here this minus and plus signs get cancelled minus and plus signs will get cancelled so that is why here also you get an accumulated forecast of 0 so in both you have got accumulated forecast at 0 and again when you take average 0 divided by 6 is again 6 so for both methods your MFE values are 0 so you can say both methods have no difference actually but if you look at the points here you can see here here the errors are less compared to this here in the first year the error was minus 5 here it is minus 60 so this is better actually but since over a period of time when you have evaluated all 6 they cancel out against each other you have got a 0 a 0 here so this may not be a very good measure for you to determine which is better based on the values both are 0 so whichever value has a lesser MFE whichever method has a lesser MFE is the better method now suppose this was 10 and this was 20 then since this is 10 this is a better method whichever method has a lesser MFE value or mean forecast error value that is a better method which is more accurate method but in this case both are 0 but this 0 doesn't indicate which is better some people might say both are equal so how can I say which is better which method is accurate but if you observe clearly here this is far the first method is far more better because you are, the deviations here are very less compared to the deviations in the second even though they cancel out against each other and finally your MFE becomes 0 right. so that is what we were discussing about the in the previous slide regarding how the different methods are looked upon so this MFP value now becomes very important for you to judge so since the minus values and the plus value the positive and negative values were considered you have got this particular conclusion now let us move to the next slide now so to compensate for that particular problem we now take into account a new measure called the mean absolute deviation or a MAD value we call it as MAD value or mean absolute deviation so to eliminate the problem of positive errors cancelling negative errors a simple measure is one that looks at the absolute value of the errors the size of the deviation that is regardless of sign so we are not, not looking at plus or minus sign just the difference word. that is you are taking into account the value of the deviation not the direction plus or minus just the value so when we disregard or we neglect the sign and only consider the size of the error we refer to this deviation as absolute deviation so we are taking the absolute value into picture we are not taking into consideration the plus or negative or the positive sign so when we accumulate these absolute deviations over time and find the average value of these absolute deviations we refer to this measure as the mean absolute deviation or MAD value it is if we accumulate these absolute deviations over time and find the average value of those absolute deviations we refer to this measure as the mean absolute deviation or MAD value so this is an improvement over the previous MFE value so mean forecast error error when we talked about error we took into account positive and negative so they cancelled out against each other as was evident from the previous example we got zero values for both now that can be avoided if I neglect or disregard the positive negative signs. So let us take our own uh, same uh, hypothetical uh, two forecasting methods, method 1 and method 2 and the same problem, same data. The de absolute deviations can be calculated for each year and an average can be obtained for this yearly absolute deviation. So I will take the same hypothetical two forecasting methods. Absolute deviations can be calculated for each year and an average can be obtained from this yearly absolute deviations so basically we will take the same problem and see how MAD value will help you in determining which is the better method let us take the same example two methods method 1 and method 2 so in method 1 
I have given you the yes. You can see here the actual demand is 310, forecast is 315. So we can see here the forecast error is minus 5. So for MFE calculations in the previous uh, measure, we have taken into account these values. We have retained minus and positive signs. But here in MAD values, what we are doing, we are taking the absolute value of this, neglecting the positive or negative sign and just taking the value. So minus 5 here, ignore minus 5, disregard that and say 5. Similarly, minus 10 is 10. I am just interested in what is the deviation. Whether it is plus or minus, it is a deviation for me. Whether the actual is, the forecast is less or more than the, less or uh, more than the actual demand, I am just interested in the quantity of difference, not the positive or negative side. So, here I am just retaining this 5, neglecting the minus sign. Similarly, here Retain minus 315 is minus 5, so I neglect minus sign and say 5. 365 minus 375, 10. 395 minus 390 is 5. 415 minus 405 is 10. So this 10 and this 10. So here the forecast was more than actual demand, but the absolute deviation is 10. Here the demand actually is more than the forecast, but yet these two tens difference, I am just reflecting or just noting down the differences. So what happens now? Now when you add all this, unlike your previous measure in MFE, this got cancelled and you got a value of 0. But here what happens, since I am neglecting this positive negative signs, when I add up all this, this becomes a value, it's a positive value, 60. Add all this, 5 plus 10, 15 plus 5, 20, 30, 30 45 and 15, 60. So you can see here, the total absolute deviation is 60. And when I take the mean absolute deviation, this is the total absolute deviation. When I take the mean of this, what is the mean average? That there are six observations here. So 60 divided by 6, this becomes 10. Similarly, for method 2, actual demand is same. 310 minus 370. The forecast error is minus 60. But I am retaining just the magnitude, not the sign. 60, the value. Similarly, 365 minus 455 minus 90 that I am retaining only the 90 but not the plus or minus sign and similarly for each of these the difference value I am writing here. So what happens now when I add up all this when I add up all this I get 540 you can see here 60 plus 90 150 240 360 420 and plus 120 is 540 so similarly we get 540. When I, this is the absolute deviation, total absolute deviation for forecasting method 2. Now, when I take the average of that, I get 540. 540 divided by 6 will be 90. So this is 90. So, you can see here the mean absolute deviation or MAD value for method 1 is 10, 10, whereas MAD value for forecasting method 2 is 90. So, since Method 1 has a lower MAD value. Method 1 is more accurate than method 2. So in this case, since we have not taken into account plus or minus values, we get a clear picture here. The mean absolute deviation for method 1 is 10, whereas for method 2 it is 90. 10 is obviously much more, much lesser than 90. So forecasting method 1 has a lower MAD value. Method 1 has a lower MAD value since, since it has a lower MAD value, it is more accurate than method 2. So, we come to the conclusion that method 1 is more accurate than method 2.